This is a great practice problem that asks a pretty simple question. Will aqueous iron 2 ions spontaneously oxidize elemental chromium under standard conditions? Use reduction potentials to support your answer. So one of the reasons I love this question is it says nothing about what the products of the reaction might be. And chromium in particular and iron actually have access to multiple oxidation states. So we're not even sure what the products would be, right? And so what we're going to need to do here is dig into a table of standard reduction potentials and see if we can come up with a situation, a combination of two half reactions involving the reduction of iron 2 and the oxidation of chromium 0 that result in a positive cell potential overall. So it's a fun little exercise exploring a standard reduction potential table. And I actually encourage you to pause the video and work through this on, on your own in a table of reduction potentials. There's one on Wikipedia, there's one in the OpenStax text, you can find them all over the place. But I've pulled up the one here from the OpenStax Chemistry 2nd Edition text, and what I'm going to do is scroll towards the bottom and start looking for chromium and iron too. The first thing that jumps out at my eye here is this reduction of chromium-3 by three electrons to form chromium solid. This is the exact reverse of what we're looking for, right? And it's got a potential, this reduction reaction has a potential of negative 0.744 volts. Intuitively, conceptually, that means it is very difficult to reduce chromium-3 to chromium metal. In fact, chromium metal would love to give up three electrons. The potential of that oxidation process would be positive 0.744 volts, right? So things are looking pretty good here, right? And in fact, directly above that uh, reduction process, we have the reduction of iron 2 plus to form iron metal. And that is also a fairly difficult reduction process with a potential of negative 0.447 volts. So we can actually use these two reduction potentials to think through whether the oxidation of chromium metal by iron 2 would be spontaneous. So let's jump back to the slides now and let's remind ourselves of what the products would be based on those two half reactions we just saw. So in the chromium case, it was Cr3+, plus, Cr3 plus aqueous was the product of the chromium oxidation. I guess it was the reactant of the chromium reduction and the product of the iron reduction was iron metal, Fe solid. And now, just to keep everything balanced here, I've got 2 plus on the left and 3 plus on the right. So I'm going to need two chromiums over here, and I'm going to need three irons over here, and three irons over here, and two chromiums over there. And now I'm all balanced up. So here is a chemical equation, anyway, for the oxidation of chromium metal by iron 2. Now the question remains, is this a spontaneous redox reaction or not? Well, let's start with the reduction potential of iron 2. The reduction potential of Fe2+, plus, where the product is Fe. Back to the table, the potential there was negative 0.447 volts. It's actually non-spontaneous, right? With respect to the sheet, with respect to the standard hydrogen electrode, that kind of means nothing outside of the context of the standard hydrogen electrode, since this is all relative to that value. And it all depends on the other reduction potential, which is the reduction potential of chromium three plus where the product is chromium metal. And that was quite a bit more negative. That was up or down at a potential of negative 0.744 volts. Negative 0.744 volts. 
all right. Now, we can think about this a few different ways. The way I would tend to think about this is that the cathode of a hypothetical galvanic cell involving these four components would be the half cell at higher, more positive, less negative reduction potential. So the iron two plus iron couple for that half cell would be my cathode. It's at higher reduction potential, more positive or less negative. The chromium three chromium half cell would then sort of by default be my anode. It's at more negative or less positive reduction potential. And now we can apply the idea that I'm gonna actually just copy and paste from a previous slide, that the potential of this hypothetical cell would be the potential of the cathode minus the potential of the anode. And we've already got those values from the table and listed here. And so I'm gonna just copy this down, negative 0.447 volts for the cathode. And now watch carefully, minus the reduction potential of the anode. So I'm gonna copy this reduction potential and paste it in, negative 0.744 volts. And notice that negative is gonna become a positive value. This difference comes out to an overall cell potential of positive 0.2 nine, seven volts. And that number actually doesn't matter at all. What matters is that this value is greater than zero, greater than zero volts. In other words, the cell potential is positive. From this, we can infer that the reaction is spontaneous as written. So, our final conclusion here is that yes, iron two cation is capable of oxidizing chromium and specifically the reaction that's most likely to occur is the formation of iron metal solid and chromium three plus. So this is a great example of applying cell potentials to get some thermodynamic information about a redox reaction, namely whether it's spontaneous as written or not. There's a deep connection to free energy here. You'll recall that we've done this already in thinking about the free energy change, not just for a redox reaction, but for any old reaction. In the next section, we're gonna connect free energy to the cell potential as well as chemical equilibrium and bring electrochemistry thermodynamics and chemical equilibrium all together.